It will soon be 30 years since Liverpool last won a league title, and former keeper Bruce Grobelar is at the heart of it, alongside a witch doctor from 1992. Hey. I'm Paco, and a big thank you to Rashid for suggesting this video. If you have any other video suggestions, then be sure to comment those below because hey, we've got time, man. I've always had a ton of fun doing these sorts of videos, the not so serious videos, like the seven dead cats that curse racing club at Argentina. That's a favorite video of mine, by the way. If you haven't done so yet, you should check it out. But yeah, with football being canceled for what's looking like a while, unfortunately, we can explore these weird avenues together every once in a while, you know? Okay, let's start. And if you aren't too familiar with all of Liverpool's former players, then... Bruce Grobelar is one of the most decorated Liverpool players in the history of the club and one of their most iconic keepers. Born in Durban, South Africa, he grew up in the region formerly recognized as Rhodesia, which is now modern day Zimbabwe, the team he represented at the international level. But before football, he served in the Rhodesia regiment during the Rhodesian Bush War or the Zimbabwe War of Liberation, a harrowing time to be sure, which I won't go over in this video, but I've included a link to an interview in which Grobelar himself speaks of his time in that war. But following that war, his footballing career saw him move around a bit. In 1979, Canada's Vancouver Whitecaps signed Grobelar, though he didn't stick as the first choice keeper and ended up going on loan to crew Alexandra in England's fourth division at the time. It was here where he was scouted by Liverpool scouts and after another season with Vancouver, this time as the first choice keeper, Liverpool signed him in March of 1981. He was a bit erratic in his early days with Liverpool, but he went on to win 13 titles in 13 years with the Reds, providing plenty of memorable moments for the fans, such as the classic spaghetti legs and the shootout victory over AS Roma during the 1984 European Cup final in Roma's own backyard. But he still holds the title of being the last Liverpool keeper to lift the trophy of the league title, as he was part of the Liverpool squad that won the league in 1990. So where does a witch doctor come into play with all of this? To honor Grobelar's Liverpool career, the club had a testimonial match versus none other than Everton on October 10th, 1992, which at that point had marked 11 years with the club and was the first season that the league had changed from the first division to the Premier League. The friendly ended 2-2, with Grobelar in fact failing to convert a penalty, but that, of course, is not where the curse comes in. So as Grobelar himself has told it, he was sponsored by Zambezi Lager at the time, and to show their respect for Grobelar, they sponsored the testimonial and sent along a witch doctor as well. But this witch doctor was up to mischief, and I would perhaps venture a guess that United or Everton have their fingerprints on this one. Why? Well, as Grobelar has said during the match at Anfield, the witch doctor, quote, Went around on the posts and put his goat's tail, put his water on the posts of both sides, got the microphone and said, If you don't have the jungle man Bruce Grobelar here, you're not going to win again. Years go by, each one with the same story. Liverpool failed to top the table over and over again, but nobody paid any mind to the curse. The club was going through different cycles and trying to recapture their glory days of the 80s. But then under Rafa Benitez, the mid-2000s looked quite promising, but alas, Despite a European Cup, there was no league titles to speak of. Then, Brendan Rodgers' Liverpool side that boasted the incredible attack of Daniel Sturridge that was, well, a Daniel Sturridge that was interested in living up to his potential and staying healthy, of course. And Luis Suarez that was establishing himself as one of the world's elite attackers. They were just rollicking the rest of the Premier League, scoring goals for fun, but conceding almost just as many as they were scoring. In seeing how the season was going and how Liverpool had a chance to win their first title in 24 years, Grobelar knew what had to be done, even if it wasn't pretty. He knew that there was only one way to break the curse that the witch doctor had placed upon his beloved club 22 years earlier. He told The Guardian, quote, The only way to break it is to urinate on all four posts. I've done two, but I got caught going down to the Anfield Road end and removed. That's when Liverpool came second in 2014. See, he had only urinated on the posts at the cop end, and look what happened. Stevie G slipped, and City ultimately won the title. So, to make amends, at the end of last season, where Liverpool came the closest they've come to winning the title since 1990, 
Grobbelar took matters into his own hands. Quote, Last season I played in a corporate game here. We were in the dressing room and the guy said, you have to do the business today. I said, okay. I took a water bottle, poured the water out, peed in the bottle, and came back. First half at the cop end, I splashed it all over the posts. Second half, I came down to the Anfield Road end and splashed it all over the posts. Hey man, you want proof? This video from Steve Mack on Twitter, again linked below, seems to show Grobbelar in the act of giving the posts a golden shower. <laughs> now the thing is, we don't know yet if the curse has broken thanks to, and I can't say the real name of it because YouTube will punish me and times are already tough as is, but thanks to the beer sickness, this season is up in the air. It's likely Liverpool will be awarded the title and they are deserving of it given how great they were this season, but if they aren't, perhaps the curse lives on. Perhaps since Grobbelar used a bottle, it doesn't count and the Witch Doctor's curse will continue to haunt Liverpool until it's taken care of properly. I mean, just ask the Australian football team how strong witch doctors' curses can be. As in 1969, they were cursed to never qualify for a World Cup again, and they didn't do so for decades. In 2004, Australian TV host John Safran traveled to Mozambique to undergo a ceremony to reverse the curse from 1969, including blood magic. Well, chicken blood magic. But did it work? Indeed it did. As in 2005, the Socceroos qualified for the 2006 World Cup after beating Uruguay in a playoff and have been there for every tournament ever since. So, we will soon see if Grobbelar's ceremony was enough to turn Liverpool's title fortunes around, or maybe we won't given that football and all sport just doesn't exist anymore. Thanks 2020, great year you've been so far, but hopefully we will get to see. But thanks for watching this video, this very serious video, guys. I appreciate you taking the time. My name is e Paco. <laughs> I love you and take care of yourself. Ciao.